In this lecture, I want to talk about the expressiveness of uh, multilayer perceptrons. So a uh, key result here is the universal representation theorem. The universal representation theorem tells us what kind of functions can be approximated with a multilayer perceptron. And I won't give a mathematical proof here, uh, but essentially uh, describe the qualitative result. So typically, universal representation theorems for neural networks make statements as the following. A neural network with a single hidden layer and a monotonically dis increasing nonlinearity sigma can approximate any continuous function from inputs to outputs with an arbitrary accuracy that we fix, assuming that sufficiently many hidden neurons are provided. All right. So we are talking about functions <clears throat> from the input space to the output space that can be uh, functions going from many dimensions to many dimensions. Uh, we will only look at a function um, that goes from R1 to R1 in, in the subsequent examples, but the same applies to going from R and N0 to R N2. And we assume the functions are smooth. So we, we do not uh, in allow things like step functions or delta functions. And secondly, we also assume that we have access to as many hidden neurons as necessary. So those are the main restrictions in there. And if those can be met, then a single hidden layer neural network, so a two layer neural network, can give us arbitrarily good approximation of that function. So that is the statement here. So proofs for these universal representation theorems depend exactly on what kind of functions you allow and what kind of nonlinearities or connectivity in the neural network you allow. And here are two famous ones. Uh, these are two um, basic papers that introduce the universal representation theorem. But then there are many, many more papers uh, involving universal representation theorems for other kinds of functions or specific kind of neural networks. And this is still a, an active area uh, of research in mathematics. <clears throat> so on one hand, this statement seems quite strong because it says you can approximate a very general class of functions very well or arbitrarily well with a very simple kind of multilayer perceptron. And it, it raises the question, so if that is the case, why do we even need more complicated neural networks? Why would we need deep neural networks, for example? There are some caveats here, though. So first of all, just the fact that we can prove that the network can in principle learn a certain function doesn't mean we know how to do that. The proof that such parameters exist doesn't give us an algorithm to find them. And, and that can be a big issue, finding those parameters. Secondly, even if we can approximate a function, a smooth function, arbitrarily well, in, um, in the limit of infinitely many hidden neurons doesn't mean that we can get an acceptable error with a manageable number of neurons. In particular, for many complex functions, the number of hidden neurons we need in order to get acceptable accuracy is huge. And uh, there are examples where the number of hidden neurons needed to get a fixed requested accuracy in approximating the function is exponentially large in the input size. And in such cases, deep ne neural networks may, may perform much better. So in fact, there are examples where the number of neurons needed per layer to get a good approximation accuracy are much smaller in deep neural networks than in shallow neural networks. Okay, let's, let's get a little bit more formal. <clears throat> so we want to demonstrate, and I'm saying not prove, but demonstrate um, or illustrate a universal representation theorem for the following one-dimensional problem. So we are given a continuous function f that goes from the real numbers to the real numbers. 
And uh, the universal representation theorem guarantees that if we have enough hidden neurons, then we can find weights W1, B1, W2, and B2, such that the two-layer network function given here, so this is simply um, a normal feedforward neural ne uh, network or multilayer perceptron with two layers, approximates this function with a desired accuracy. So what that means is we define an, an error, epsilon, that is an acceptable error for us. One should say that additionally we have to define this on a certain set, on a bounded set on which we want to achieve this error. Um, and on this bounded set we want to achieve that the prediction of the neural network minus the uh, true function and the absolute value of that difference is smaller than this error threshold for all uh, for all x's so for all inputs on the set and as an example consider this particular function here that is the function that we want to approximate and uh, we are using a neural network a multi-layer perceptron with this activation function here a logistic function so that's the problem now we illustrate how the proofs for these universal representation theorems often work. And um, to do this, consider just a small neural network with one input neurons, what one input neuron, two hidden neurons, and one output neuron. And now first we consider the activation of the first hidden neuron, so the upper hidden neuron. And we look at the parameter settings where the weight that goes into this neuron equals 8 and the bias of this neuron is minus 4. So this is a logistic neuron. So with those settings then as a function of x we have the graph uh, shown in the top right uh, for the output activation of that neuron. So it's a logistic function and it's positioned and squeezed as a function of w and b. Now if we choose different w's and b's we can move this function around and we can make it steeper or shallower. <clears throat> so for example using a larger weight makes the function steeper and using a very large weight can make it step-like. And by choosing a suitable bias, so in this case uh, the bias is minus 400, uh, we can position where uh, the sigmoid switches from 0 to 1. Actually, the position of the switching is at minus b divided by w, so it ends up being at 0 0.4 here. So by choosing these parameters suitably, we can essentially mimic a step function and we can position it at the x value where we want it. So that means by using two new neurons, we can build a step up and a step down, so we can build a hat function. By using four neurons, we can build a hat down and a hat up, for example, or any sequence of hat functions. And by doing this with more neurons, you can see that you can arbitrarily approximate any smooth function on a bounded set by using many enough such step functions. And you will need two neurons to represent every step function or every head function. So now we have approximated a certain function that we are interested in arbitrarily well. And we have, we have done that by combining many hidden neurons and summing up their results. In a multilayer perceptron with two layers, so a two-layer perceptron, this is essentially the almost the output of the neural network, but it is just before entering the activation function of the last neuron. So really the last neuron's activation function is not even needed here. So we could show this for a multilayer perceptron that does not have an activation function in the last neuron. Or alternatively, we use the fact that sigma sigma inverse f is equal to f. And then we simply 
show the approximation of sigma inverse f using the construction with these head functions that we have done in the last in the last slide and then we are done so this is the conceptual proof or this is a conceptual uh, uh, proof of the universal representation theorem that I have described but uh, this is obviously not how neural networks practically work so a uh, gradient based training algorithm that seeks parameters that well approximate a function so that you for example train by minimizing the mean square error between the predicted value and the given function value at the inputs would find parameters that do not try to solve um, the problem in this way. So you will not get uh, head functions if you look at pairs of hidden neurons. This is just an approach to prove that uh, a set of parameters exist that can find a solution.